Hey guys, since moving to the San Francisco Bay Area, I have been exploring the hot pot scene and I realized something. The hot pots in San Francisco are just amazing. So much so that when it came time to do a hot pot video, I couldn't just choose one place. So then I thought, oh well, let's just do it on all of them. And to make it interesting, we're gonna have a little comparison. That's why for this video, I did my research and picked out four of the most popular all-you-can-eat hot pot restaurants in San Francisco. And I'm gonna go eat at all of them this week and take you with me. Now, I'm choosing all-you-can-eat places because I generally feel that's where you can get the most value for your money. Because typically when you go to a la carte hot pot restaurants, a plate of beef or a plate of lamb will run you about 10, 11, 12 dollars. And for me, I'll go through three plates of lamb before even sitting down. I feel the same way about Korean barbecues, by the way. And I'll Although I really don't like to give out points or rates on a numerical scale how good a restaurant is, but this time we're gonna try that. So the four restaurants I will be visiting in this video are Boiling Hot Pot, Fiery Hot Pot, The Pot, and iPot. I will be rating them on five different things. The sauce bar, the soup base, variety, meat quality, and service. Typically, I don't really care about service at a Chinese restaurant, but this is a hot pot buffet. That means your waiter or waitress is your direct link to all you can eat meats. And there's nothing worse than sitting around a hot pot with all your friends and all you have left is a broth. So yeah, service is really important at these places. I'm gonna rank each of these items out of five just so we can kind of compare all these restaurants. Also keep in mind, this is just my opinion and you may completely disagree with me, which is 100% okay because we all have different tastes. I might be going on a day where the service is completely horrible and you might have wins when it rocked the house, so it's all subjective. But my main purpose for this video is to show you guys all the awesome all-you-can-eat hot pot spots in San Francisco, and I do believe that these are all quality places. All right, let's go hot potting. The first place we're gonna try is Fiery Hot Pot. And I'm loving that name because all hot pot should be fiery. And for this meal, I got Jasmina and Jennifer joining me because you can't eat hot pot alone. You gotta eat with friends. Let's take a look at the menu. And the meat selection is kind of limited. You got a supreme beef, you got a ribeye, you got a lamb, pork belly, chicken, who needs that, and fish. Also in the middle, there's some dumplings and blood cake. There's six different soup bases to choose from. I, of course, got the fiery spicy beef and they recommended the rich pork for something that's not as spicy. And when they asked me how spicy I want the fiery spicy beef to be, I, of course, said the spiciest it can be. So here it is, the spicy beef and the rich pork. I'm just gonna take a little bit and try this out here. It is really spicy and peppery. Um, I don't know how flavorful it is. I really taste the spice and peppercorn. I'm gonna have to reserve judgment until I actually dip something in there. Now the reason the menu was sort of limited is because of this. Check this out. I've never seen this at an All You Can Eat Hot Pot before. This is a buffet bar and this is all included in the buffet so what i see is a lot of veggie options here let's skip the broccoli never touch that beautifully arranged greens and this aisle i really like got some tripe love that little clams mussels shrimp spam and this is really cool they got ramen sitting up here i've got to say all this is, is pretty awesome we definitely got a lot of stuff on the first round i mean basically everything in that bar and every single meat item except for the chicken because come on that's that's a waste of stomach space this is the ribeye this is definitely the best meat they have in the house here and see how good it is drop it in the fiery broth really quick don't let it cook for too long first bite of a hot pot is always the most exciting mm. this meat is sliced really really thin and look at the marbling on this I feel like the meat quality obviously I just came back from Kobe and I had some Kobe beef so my beef scale is all sorts of messed up but for all you can eat hot pot buffet this meat is not bad I think the key is it's sliced paper thin so it breaks apart in your mouth really well as long as you don't overcook it but I do have to say I was right about the soup base um, besides being really peppery and really spicy it doesn't have a lot of flavor some hot pot places you dip the ingredients into the broth you take it out it's good to go to eat but here you got to use your sauce for mine I typically use a mixture of sha cha garlic peanut or sesame sauce chili oil soy sauce and whatever little greens I can find let's try the supreme beef I noticed right away that the supreme beef is really really lean so I'm kind of afraid it's gonna be a little tough mm. it is really really lean if you overcook this even a little bit Thing's gonna turn into rubber. Luckily, they had this. I didn't see this up at the buffet. You gotta ask for sesame oil, and of course, every sauce needs sesame oil. Mm. 
so, so much better with the sausage. This is something you don't see a lot at All You Can Eat Hot Pots. Beef tendon. Let's dump this in. The beef tendon is the winner. It's a little crunchy, a little gelatinous. Mm. Delicious. Look how thinly this fish is sliced though. I don't usually like fish in my hot pot, but because it looks so pretty, I'm gonna have some. Mm. I'm sure the fish is quite good here. So this is the house spicy sauce. Yeah. Spicy sauce. Really spicy, huh? Very spicy. Oh, let's do it. Never spicy enough. Let's try out the secret house special spicy sauce. Honestly, you can't really tell the difference. The meal is over and I feel like I like this place. I don't love it, but it has certain really strong points. For example, service at this place is impeccable. It's, this is by far the best service I've ever had at an all-you-can-eat hot pot buffet. Usually at these places, I, I feel like I'm begging them for food. Can I please have some more lamb? Can I please have some more beef? And then you just cross your fingers and hope they actually bring it to you. But this place, the server came by really often asking if they could get you anything else and they actually bring it to you. So service, I give them a five. You know what, can, can I add an extra point, like an extra credit for them? Because their service is it's that good. So give them six points for the service. I feel the overall general variety of the ingredients is it's a bit lacking though. A couple things I really liked that wasn't present was uh, potato. Um, they didn't really have the fuzu or tofu skin. And although it's not required, it's really nice when all you can eat hot pot places give you little side dishes to eat, but they didn't really have that here. So in terms of variety, I would give them a 3.5. Moving on to sauce bar. All the main ingredients was there. They had the sha cha, sesame sauce, but a couple things I feel like uh, were missing. One is a chive sauce that's actually a very traditional sauce used for hot pot. Also the hot chili oil really wasn't your typical hot chili oil and overall it just wasn't really that spicy so for sauce bar I give it a four next up the quality of meat the meat is sliced in which is really important to me in hot pot it was nicely marbled so overall the meat was pretty tender it wasn't blow me away good but it's okay so I give the meat quality three point Eight. And finally, let's talk about the weakest point of this place, the broth. The spicy broth was, like I said, just spicy and peppery and not much else. The pork, rich pork broth wasn't all that rich and uh, the flavor, again, was kind of lacking. So without the sauce as a compliment, you couldn't just dip the ingredients in and eat it like that. It just wasn't flavorful enough. So for broth, I would have to give this place a two. And that gives us a total of 19.3 points divided by five, averaging 3.86. No, I did not just do all that in my head. I actually stopped filming and he took a calculator because I'm Asian but I'm not that Asian. Hot pot number two. Boiling Hot Pot. Boiling Hot Pot has two locations, one in San Francisco and one in Fremont. I wanted to go to the San Francisco location, but it was just way too far, it's too much traffic today, so I'm at the Fremont location. I just took a look at the sauce bar and it looks phenomenal. They have three to four different types of hot oil, which is speaking directly to my heart, and they give you fried salted peanuts, which is awesome. Now, when it comes to the pot itself, this is where uh, this place is really unique. Out of all the soup bases they have, I can actually order four soup bases. Oh, that is awesome. This is my uh, mango milk drink. Milk, just mango milk thing. Do mangoes produce milk? Can you milk a mango? I'm not sure, but this is like $3. No drinks actually come with the buffet. Oh, that is nice. This is actually a perfect hot pot drink. It's nice and milky and cool. Anyway, back to the soup basis. We got nutritious herbal stock, boiling spicy, curry with coconut milk, and tomato ox bar. First time eating so many hot pot soup bases. I'm really, really excited about that. Start off with a little sha cha barbecue. Again, my favorite recipe, sesame sauce, garlic. Look at this, this is pure oil. There's not, nothing even down here. And you want a little pepper in here, not too much. This actually looks like one of those eight trigram things, and I'm so excited because this is the most variety soup base I've ever had in a single hot pot setting. So first of all, the curry, it's not very strong though, not very overwhelming, very light curry flavor. This is the herbal broth. As you can see, there's tons of traditional Chinese herbal ingredients in here. Oh, that's actually really good. Mm. Next, this is this traditional uh, house spicy broth. Oh, uh, someone just kicked me in the mouth. Oh, that is really spicy and peppery. Foods are definitely gonna come out of this broth burning hot in more ways than one. But spice is really all I taste here. I mean, the spice is so overwhelming. And I'm really excited about this middle one. This is the tomato oxtail. Wow, ooh, well, that's good. 
that's gonna be really good. And not only is it just tomato wheat, it's actually quite flavorful. In the meat, if you take a look, there's a lot of different varieties of meat. This one is a little creepy. This is the uh, marinated tenderloin, but the Wagyu looks really good. Nice, beautiful marbling, paper thin. Look at that. Nice fat. A lot of lean meat on this though. Let's try this without any dipping sauce. Oh, that is a good piece of beef. I want to try this in the uh, hot broth. See how thin this is? It cooks literally in like five seconds. Just as I expected, the broth is nothing but spice, but that beef, that's really good. We'll definitely hit 10 orders of these. This is really interesting. This is beef soaked in beer. Oh, I definitely smell beer on this. That alcoholic flavor is very, very, very apparent on that. I mean, it tastes like what it's called. It tastes like beef dipped in beer. I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and try this like weird melted cow thing and let's do it in the curry. I, I don't really know how to feel about that. It just tastes like a boiled chunk of beef. I love it when hot pot places have yotel or fried dough. I bet you this is gonna be really good in a tomato broth. Just cook it for a little bit, let it soak up some of the soup, not too much. Really quick tip for you guys. I love it when my soup bases have a lot of cilantro and scallions, so when they don't put enough in there, go get some from the buffet and just add it in. What's your favorite soup base? <laughs> this one, tomato one? Yeah. Oh, I agree. Woo, two hot pots and two knives. I I'm surprised I'm still alive. This is a very solid hot pot option. Already much better than any of the hot pot places I've been to in New York City, but let's break it down. Sauce bar, very nice. Different types of hot oil made me very happy. But what I noticed was that the hot oil and the chilies, you guys saw how much I put in my sauce bar. Wasn't all that spicy. Also, it was missing the chive sauce, a very traditional ingredient. So I'm gonna give the bar a 3.8. When it comes to variety, this place definitely a ton, a ton of variety. Out of everything I ate, I definitely recommend their wide noodles and of course their Wagyu beef. And it was a real plus having fried dough on the menu. But again, like the last place, not a lot of side items. I love the fried peanuts, but that's about it. So for variety, I'll give it a four. Meat quality. The Wagyu is gonna be as good as you're gonna find at a hot pot all you can eat buffet. And the normal supreme beef in the lamb was pretty good as well. But other than that, the marinated uh, tenderloin, I didn't really get much flavor from that. The beef soaked in beer, I'm not a big fan of, but I don't drink, so maybe you'll like that. So meat quality, I'll give it a four. Next up, the broth. I love that they give you such a variety. And my favorite was definitely the tomato and oxtail, but the rest of the broth really didn't have much flavor at all. The curry, uh, the spicy broth was really spicy. Again, not that much flavor. So overall, taking into account the variety of the soup base, I'll give this a 3.7. And finally, the service. Look, everybody here, it's really, really friendly. They're really, really nice, but at all you can eat hop up buffet, you need them to bring you the food. If they don't bring you the food, it's like, it's like your, your pipeline to goodies is just disconnected. So after we ran out of food, we asked for a menu, which did not come. We asked for a Wagyu, which did not come. So what we ate uh, today was really the first serving, the first wave of food. So everything we tried to order after that, didn't show up. So I'm gonna have to bump this service down to a 2.5. If you add all that up, that gives this place a combined score of 18 with an average of 3.6. All right, let's go to hot pot number three. Location number three, the pots. I feel sort of fortunate because every time I'm about to film a hot pot video, the weather has been chilly and rainy, perfect for hot pot. First impression, this place seems pretty clean and very spacious. A couple of initial reactions about this place. First of all, they have a lot of different soup bases. They have over a dozen soup bases and you can choose up to three because they also have like a little separating hot pot. The other thing is, there's no sauce bar. This, this is the sauce bar. Sha Cha, barbecue sauce, uh, sesame, not hot oil, like the garlicky hot sauce, raw garlic, scallions, cilantro, and I think that's soy sauce. And that is all the sauce options you get. But I will say, when you go to some good hot pot places in China, their soup bases are so good, you don't actually need much sauce at all. All they really give you is some sesame sauce and that's it. So hopefully this soup base is really that good. We're gonna go for the tiyu mala guo. This literal translation is hell spicy pot. This is unique. Dry scallop winter melon chicken feet mushroom. This is a popular soup base in Southern China, kanji base. Let's go ahead and try that. And finally, this is gonna be really bizarre. Preserved eggs, pi dan, soup base. Really unique, Kobe beef, lamb, beef tongue, beef marinated wine, lamb marinated beer, yeah. beef tripe, beef tendon. 
the soy sauce is already brought to me um, in this bowl. I don't really love this in my sauce. This is like garlicky, almost sriracha-like hot sauce, but seems like this is all they have. Of course, scallions and cilantro. This is really far from what I usually put in my sauce, but I guess I'll have to do. There's our soup base. Yay, look at that. This is the preserved eggs, peanut, which is like thousand-year-old eggs and cilantro. Oh, it definitely smells, smells amazing. Hmm, that's quite flavorful. Very aromatic. I don't really taste the preserved eggs, but it's definitely in there. I think we should eat that at some point during the meal. The kanji is very watery. It just tastes like lightly salted, watery kanji. This is the hell soup base. I always wonder what hell tasted like. Let's see. It's uh, sour. I think I like the cilantro preserved eggs out of this, but the rest of them, not a lot of flavor. This is the beef, beef tongue, and lamb. All this looks really, really pretty. Let's try the beef first. Swish it all around, get it to the bottom where it touches the rice a little bit. There you go. All I taste is the beef. I don't taste the congee broth whatsoever. It's like I boiled it in water. Let's try the spice. A little bit sour, a little bit spicy. That's about it. But the meat quality does really stand out. Let's try the lamb. I'm gonna eat a piece of cilantro with this. Mmm. Oh, my lamb is tender. Not gamey at all. So this is lamb for those of you who don't really like lamb. I'm actually really excited about this beef tongue. Mm. The meat's good. Broth is still lacking. This is like a hit of cabbage of tofu skin. Watch it shrink though. Well, eventually it will shrink. I employed the dumping method of eating hot pot. So I love putting everything in, wait till it boils, and then just pig out. Uh oh, I think, I think we might have dumped a little too much. Hot pot overflow right now. Mm. I dipped that in the broth, still came out crunchy. It might not mean that much to you, but this place definitely has the best yotel of all the hot pot places I've been to. The dumpling selection here is actually quite nice. It's really interesting. You can boil a ship dumpling. Mm, nice porky flavor. And it's juicy. I really like it. That's the custard dumpling. First time I'm in a hot pot place that I ever put something that's more like a dessert item into a salty, savory hot pot soup base. And that came out really nice. This is the liu sha bao. It's a very popular um, dim sum food item. And there's salty and sweet egg yolk inside this little dumpling. You see how that's already kind of oozing a bit? Ooh. Mm. The skin is nice and chewy. The yolk is salty and sweet. It's got that added flavor from the soup base. Mm, that's delicious. So, an hour and 10 pounds later, that's it. Uh, officially about to enter food coma, and that's not good because I got an hour drive home. But let's talk about this place. The thing that stood out to me here was the service. Service, fantastic. Everybody here, super, super nice. As soon as you order, the food comes right away. Service, I'm gonna give them a nice 4.5. When it comes to the sauce bar, well, I mean, this, this, this is... This is it. So not a lot of options on the sauce bar, but still, I feel like the sauce ingredient, the quality of the sauce is really good. So I'm gonna give it a 3.5. When it comes to variety, this place definitely has a lot of variety. Different types of meats, a lot of different vegetables. I feel like this place has more dumplings, like fish balls, than any other place I've ever been to. And their dumplings are actually really, really terrific. So variety, 4.5. Meat quality, I really like the meat here. It's super, super tender. The lamb doesn't have a lot of gaminess. I give the meat quality a four. Now let's talk about the soup base. I feel like the soup base wasn't all that flavorful. It just seemed a little blend, and certain flavors really stuck out. I did like the uh, preserved eggs and cilantro one because the cilantro flavor is so strong. But overall, the soup base is kind of lacking, so I'm gonna give it a 3.2. If you add all that up, that gives you 19.7 with an average of 3.94. I think that's the highest score we've had in the last three places so far. Also, just from a personal uh, feeling um, about this place, I really like this place. I feel like uh, all the ingredients here are really, really quality. So not only do they have a lot of selection, everything tastes really good. And to be able to put your food order in and get your food right away and have the servers check on you, making sure you have enough soup stock, making sure your drinks filled, that is huge when it comes to all you can eat hot pot. Because like I mentioned before, the server, that's your lifeline to food. All right guys, final hot pot place.
Let's go. This is the last place, iPod, and I'm, I'm a little biased about this place because I've been here before. This is, this is the first hot pot I, I went to when I first moved to the Bay Area. And from day one, I absolutely love this place. I'll tell you why. First of all, there's a lot of selections here. And there's a couple non-meat items on here that I absolutely adore. Also, what sets this place apart from all the other hot pot places is that when you sit at specific tables, you can have hot pot as well as Korean barbecue. The soup bases we have gotten is number one, secret spicy soup. Number two, pork bone soup. These are their two most popular ones. And then we're gonna try number five, Thai Tom Yum soup. They do have a lot of different types of meat here. So let's go for the New Zealand lamb, American Wagyu beef, beef rib eye, pork belly, spam, red wine lamb, red wine beef, house-made spicy lamb, house-made spicy beef, beef tripe, Kuro Buddha pork belly, yes please, beef short ribs. Let's go to the bar. This is the sauce bar, and, and this is the sauce bar 2.0, the mini sauce bar. My favorite ingredient that I've been kind of whining about, the leek flour sauce. So now I can teach you guys my not so secret ancient Chinese hot pot sauce recipe, which is really simple. All it is is sesame sauce, a third of it, should be the leek sauce. And that's it, as simple as that, and that's gonna be delicious. This is the tom yum, this is the pork bone, and this is the secret spicy. You guys excited about this? Yeah. Yes. Soup test time. There's actually pork bone in here. Broth is quite flavorful. Mm, that's good. Next is the tom yum. There's not much in here. Wow, that's... <laughs> that is nice. Wow, that is lemony and extremely, extremely spicy. Finally, the secret spicy, and this thing is like just boiling right now. I wouldn't call it extremely flavorful, but it is very salty and spicy. I do feel like this place's broth is gonna be much more seasoned and probably tastes better than all the other places. Before we start everything, let me show you how to make a poached egg at a hot pot place. Take an egg, take your little uh, spoon with the holes in there, lower it into your broth a little bit, crack the egg. All you gotta do, Keep the egg in there. Don't let it go all the way to the bottom because then your egg's gonna fall out and disappear forever. So just put it in for about a minute or two or three, depending on if you like your eggs runny or hard. That is a chili infused egg, like really infused, boiled in chili sauce. Trust me guys, cook your egg in hot pot. That's gonna be one of the most flavorful eggs you'll ever have. How I like to get started at this place, drop the butter, just move the butter around a bit. Now watch the miracle happen. Just a little sesame oil with some salt here. Dip in here a little bit. Mm. Brisket is probably my favorite food item at a Korean barbecue. I'm really digging the spicy lamb. This is just basically thin slices of lamb soaked, soaked in chili hot oil. I feel like Korean barbecue and hot pot are just meant to be together. I'm gonna dip it in my uh, secret, not so secret sauce here. That's perfect. Guys, if they offer sesame sauce and a leek sauce next time you go to a hot pot, trust me, try this out. Two part sesame sauce, one part leek sauce, dip just a little bit, you're gonna thank me. Another thing I really like about this place is this. They hand make Bion Bion noodles in the back. And a few minutes later, yummy Bion Bion noodles. Mm. All the hot pot broth has soaked in here. So springy and chewy. What I'm really curious is actually this tom yum broth because I, I really enjoy this. Of the three broths I tasted, this is probably the one I enjoy the most. Mm. I would recommend getting that broth. That's really spicy. That's awesome. I love putting potatoes in a hot pot. Let this boil till it becomes a little mushy. Mm. That's a good hot potty potato. I got one of the ribs, pork ribs from the uh, broth. I don't know what it is with Chinese people, but whenever we see um, bones with some meat on there, we want to gnaw on it. This was not such a good idea, but this is called in Chinese, chi eating for fun. And yes, for fun is one of the reasons Chinese people eat. You guys remember I threw a whole egg in the hot pot broth before, because if you never had a hot pot boiled egg, you never live. If you want the egg to have more hot pot flavor, obviously boiling it within the shell in the hot pot soup is not gonna do anything for it. So you can throw it back into the soup after you peel it. But for me, it's, it's really just about dipping it in my hot pot sauce. Mm. There's something about the creaminess of the yolk that is so good at soaking up that sauce. Trust me guys, you gotta try it. Something else, these are fried donuts. And what you do is dip it in condensed milk. It's like a dessert. 
That is artery cloggingly delicious. You guys see the glazed look over my eyes? That means I'm done. I'm done and I, I have hot pot growing out of my head right now. So let's break those plates down. When it comes to variety, this place definitely has a lot of stuff. It's got tons of different types of meats. I love the fresh noodles they have here. That's a huge, huge plus for me. Usually when you go to hot pot places, they'll have instant noodles or they'll have some rice noodles, but fresh noodles, you cannot beat that. Also, and I know this is not like a, like a strong selling point for any hot pot place, but they have a lot of side dishes here. And even though I don't order a lot of it, I do appreciate the gesture. So for variety, I give this place a 4.3. Now let's talk meat quality. I came from the East Coast where if you've ever been to hot pot places in New York City, Manhattan, the meat quality is pretty bottom tier. It really surprised me how many different types of meat they had here and how good the quality was. Now it's not gonna be any, you know, Japanese Kobe beef, but still, for all you can eat hot pot, it's not bad. That's why I give the meat quality here a four. Sauce bar, I, I feel like this place has the most complete sauce bar of any of the places I've been to. It's got sesame sauce, also peanut sauce if you prefer that. It's got the special leek sauce that I love. It's got pickled garlic and raw eggs. The only thing is their hot chili oil is not all that spicy. That's my only knock about it, but otherwise great sauce bar. And for those reasons, I give it a 4.5. The broth itself is probably the most flavorful we've had on this uh, hot pot series. It's almost too Flavorful, I mean, it's almost too salty. Like the special broth they had is really, really salty. So when you boil something in there, it's, it's almost too much. I feel like the pork bone broth flavoring was really good. So I would probably recommend getting the pork broth and maybe just adding your own chili oil in there. That way it's spicy, flavorful, and not overly salty. So for broth, I give this place a 3.8. Finally, the service. Now, uh, today, like they're on their A game. They were so attentive, you know, got us everything we needed right away. Made sure our broth was filled up, made sure we had our drinks. But, but I've been here enough times to know that the service is really on and off. Some days you'll come and it's great. Some days you'll come and they basically ignore you, which has happened to me. So I'm gonna have to average the service out. I'm gonna give it a 3.5. So that gives us a total of 20.1 points divided by five. And that is an average of 4.5. 02, our highest score on this hot pot series. And again, I'm not trying to be biased here. I have eaten here before. I do not feel that the other places that I've been to is as good overall as this place. I know a lot of you is gonna bring up coupons. I have tried coupons and I love the technology. I love that you can sit down, there's a little uh, iPad right by you. You can order your food directly that way. The food came really quickly. But I do feel like that place, the emphasis is not on the hot pot. It's really on the Korean barbecue. And overall, it just didn't taste that good for me. And of course, that's just my personal opinion. I know a lot of people love Cuba. If you do, good for you. But for me, I went there once and I didn't really feel like going back. All right, guys, so there you go. This is the first time I ever went around a city and tried almost every one of their most popular hot pot places. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. And I, I try to be as fair as I can in these videos. And I know some days the service might be on or off in a particular place and that affects their score so my ratings may not be completely accurate if you disagree with me please go ahead everyone's taste is different and this is just my own personal opinion but I would really recommend coming to this place and if you do remember to ask for tables that give you both barbecue and the hot pot and finally they give you ice cream all right guys all the locations I went to are in my description box below feel free to try them all out and give them your own scores and if you have tried any of the places let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite thank you all so much for watching this video I'll see you later